Hello and welcome to this edition of the interview on France 24. Our guest today is Edmond Mullet. He is the head of the UN mission in Haiti. Mr. Mullet, hello. Good evening, Philippe. Thank you very much for having us here in the UN uh, headquarters in New York, in the very room where, where world leaders are going to meet to try to help Haiti. So you are really on the, the forefront uh, of the, the, the international uh, community's help for Haiti. Could you tell us uh, first, what, what do you need the most? Well, we have uh, three priorities in Haiti right now, which is, uh, I would say, shelter, shelter and shelter and we need money in order to provide that shelter to the Haitians. In the fir very first weeks, we were able to provide enough tents and uh, plastics and tarps, tarpaulins uh, for the victims of the earthquake. But now we have to move away from that and trying to build some kind of more uh, solid structures uh, and roof for the Haitians. Of course, because the, the rain is coming and the, the hurricanes are coming. The rain is coming, the hurricane season in June, July, August will be there. And of course, we don't want to create expectations that, we, that it, it is not true that we will be able to provide that kind of shelter for everybody, for all the victims, 200,000 uh, tents or houses that we need I mean, for, for then. But at least we can start doing that. Many countries are already working on that. I mean, France and Spain and Canada and the US, uh, they're already building those prefab uh, houses, but it's gonna take time to put them together to ship them by by boat Find and some uh, some ground and land we need land. To also the land finally the government last Friday signed I mean the agreement and they gave us the authorization so we can start working prepar and, uh, preparing the, that the, those pieces of land in order to to uh, to prepare those, uh, those camps and if this does not happen could you describe to us what the the camps are going to look like it's going to be mud disease well it's not going to it's already like that because of some of the rain rain has already already arrived we've had the situation on, in, in the camps is really 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 bad already it's it's mud it's uh, uh, I mean uh, mosquitoes uh, on the on the uh, disease side I mean si side I think that uh, uh, preventive vaccination programs were done and I think that will be uh, good good and uh, especially for children that that is okay but everything else is is pretty messy already so we really need to move fast on that aspect and to prepare these uh, these camps with proper uh, drainage on the ground uh, for, for uh, rain uh, rainwater uh, sanitation uh, and and security also which is very important on uh, and especially for women and children so let's talk numbers actually because that's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day how much money do you need and are you are you confident that you're going to get it well the the government has put together uh, an amount of around 3.8 billion dollars and which is the sum of what has been determined by the PDNA exercise this is the post disaster disasters need uh, uh, um, assessment uh, done by the World Bank, the Inter-American uh, Development Bank, IMF and other financial institutions, the Haitian government, etc. And also the uh, action plan from the government for the midterm and long-term recovery and reconstruction of the country. So all that put together for the next 18 months, those $3.8 billion will be needed. After that, I mean, for the next five years, the amount will probably go to 10 or 11 uh, billion dollars. Huge amounts of money. Are you concerned that there, there, there could be a bit of donor fatigue, that, you know, people can move on to the, the next uh, emergency? Well, w it's certain that we will have other tsunamis and earthquakes and uh, devastations in other parts of the world. But this time, I think that the international community is really committed uh, to do something for Haiti. Uh, and but we've we, been we, there before. We, we've, we've had these donor conference be conferences before for Haiti. But I think I'm, I'm convinced right now that uh, the international community is going to be make a big, really fundamental effort in order to uh, bring Haiti away from this vicious circle uh, of really not addressing the fundamental questions. And I think the money is going to be there. The commitment is going to be there. There are also uh, political reasons, I think, from the United States and Canada, European Union, to to make this a, a success story this time. Uh, one of the questions donors always have when it comes to give money to a place like Haiti is how the money is going to be spent. The, the, the central government is extremely 
weak, uh, you know, there is graft, uh, there is corruption. How do you make sure that every dollar given by, by the people around the world is going to be uh, really used for the people of Haiti? The, uh, the, the, they're going to create this interim uh, reconstruction agency uh, that is going to be co-chaired by the prime minister and an international uh, representative. And there's going to be a, a group of countries, the largest donors also overseeing and uh, supervising the functioning of this agency. This agency will be in place for about 18 months, and then later on, it's going to be a, a pure Haitian uh, institution. But for 18 months, it's going to be uh, co-chaired by the international community and the Haitian, the Haitian government. But also, we've always, uh, we're always looking for an excuse in order not to work with the Haitian government. Right now, we're not asking, I mean, we're demanding from the Haitian state to be accountable to its people. To, uh, to be leading this uh, reconstruction process, to identify the priorities, to be, to be there. And we know that even before the earthquake, the Haitian state was very weak, and now it's even worse. Uh, it's more or less one-fourth of all public employees died during the earthquake, around 18,000 of them. Uh, so now you can imagine how weak the institutions are. But we will always look for an excuse not to work with, uh, with the Haitian state well, because they were corrupt, because they're inefficient, because they're weak. And we, the international community, I think we are co-responsible uh, uh, because of the weakness of the Haitian state. And I think that right now we have to really work with and through a Haitian, uh, the Haitian institutions and the Haitian state in order to I mean, build, build those capacities. Can you turn the, the tragedy into an opportunity Ban Ki-moon spoke about a, a new beginning. Can, do you think it could really happen? I do hope so. I think so. I, if this shake-up, if I can call it this way, will not change the international community's way of working in Haiti, and this will not change the Haitians themselves, I don't know what will. I think this is a unique opportunity, and we all, all have to assume our, our responsibilities. How is security right now in Haiti? Right after the quake, we saw a few violent images of people trying to get food desperately. I, is the, the security situation under control? I would say in general terms, it is under control, but uh, we cannot uh, I mean, uh, deny that in these camps and some of these neighborhoods, especially because more than 5,200 of the most uh, dangerous criminals uh, and gang members escape from the National Penitentiary and other jails and prisons, and they're out on the streets. And we know that what they know what they want to do in life is to be criminals, and they are trying to reorganize themselves. We've seen an increase in uh, in gunshot wounds uh, and uh, coming to the victims, hospitals and clinics, even to the morgue. Uh, and so that is an increase. So Did you catch any of them, actually? And do you even have a jail to put them in? Oh yeah, well, yes, the National Penitentiary was never destroyed. Somebody opened the doors <laughs> for them to escape, and that is under investigation. Uh, so uh, there is a place to put them back in. But for example, last uh, that Saturday morning, from three o'clock in the morning until six a.m., three to six a.m., we conducted a large uh, uh, in uh, Bel Air neighborhood in, in Port-au-Prince, an operation with the national police and uh, UNPOL and the Brazil, the, the new Brazilian battalion, and we were able to arrest fifty of them. So they're they're back in in jail. So little by little, we'll be addressing this this situation. The, the blue helmets okay. in uh, Haiti are responsible for the security with uh, what remains of the, the Haitian police. Uh, and uh, the UN has been criticized for failing to, to protect uh, girls mm. and women. There were a few instances of rape. Uh, these uh, young women sleep in camps next to strangers. They are not really being protected. What, what is the UN doing to try to address uh, this problem? Well, the first thing is that we have around between 800 and 900 different camps or sites scattered all over Port-au-Prince. So it is really impossible to provide 24-hour security to all of them uh, at the same time. Uh, so the idea is also to bring them together, uh, consolidate some of these areas, some camps, in order to provide, I mean, not only security, but also humanitarian assistance and food and water, sanitation, etc. It's much easier if, they, if we cons consolidate them. Now the government has given us some land, so we will be working, we'll be working on that. At the same time, we have been putting in place some patrols, uh, foot patrols, uh, not on, on cars, but foot patrols, in the camps, 24 hours a day, during the day, evening, night, etc. And in two of the camps, only by uh, female national Haitian police officers, because uh, most mainly female 
uh, are, are the victims and children are the victims of, of this kind of violence. So we want to address in, uh, that in a very uh, different approach. We're also organizing, I mean, associations of husbands uh, for them to be organized in order to protect and, and defend their, their wives. So there are many ways of organizing the, the community it, itself. Uh, another reason why the UN has been criticized is the lack of coordination of the, the aid. Even the president, uh, René Préval, uh, said that it was highly disorganized. He said that uh, the UN did not learn uh, the lessons from the, the tsunami. You've been there working very hard on the ground. I know it might be harsh for you to hear, but uh, even uh, UN officials like John Holmes have said uh, that, that you know, they were concerned about the, the lack of coordination. W was it a big mess? Well, in the very beginning, the two first weeks, I think it would have been a, a mistake to bureaucratize that generosity and that assistance, that international presence that really saved lives. I mean, all the rescue teams and, and uh, the, I mean, the, the surgeons landing in the little Cessna from Georgia uh, and trying to just assist and help. They were not going to ask permission. I mean, you would see that kind of very spontaneous generosity presence on the ground that really made a difference uh, in the first two weeks. But then after that, when we were able really to start coordinating because as you know the Haitian state and now the United Nations we were the first hard hit by the earthquake and we were depleted and uh, decimated ourselves so it took a few days before we can really reorganize ourselves first and then try to coordinate uh, the rest but then from after two or three weeks I think with the coordinating efforts have been uh, more effective we're working very well together I mean NGOs uh, UN agencies the government mm -hmm. in spite of their own weaknesses I mean they're uh, also uh, uh, reinforcing their own capacities you just said that the UN was uh, decapitated by the the, the earthquake uh, you knew a lot of these people the UN employees who died uh, 101 of them do you feel that the UN is back at work we were back at work since the very first day, of course, not but fully operational. Fully, fully operational, we're getting there. Thank you, Edmond Mullet, for having us. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you for following us. Please stay tuned. More international news coming up on France 24. <laughs>